career in the finals. Looks like a keep to me. Don't really know what we're up against, but uh, this hand seems to have sort of most of the bases covered. I mean, it's got a one drop, a reasonably aggressive three drop. It's got a Stunch Hunter Warrior plus a time defeat. I, I don't really know that I could ask for a whole lot more than that, so off we go. Like I said, in a, in a real pinch, we can time defeat our Sedge Scorpion. Get three life, two for one ourselves. That, oh, he, he missed the land drop, so that's happy times for us. And uh, I suppose unsurprisingly, there is thunder in the background. I am in Oklahoma City, so that's how they roll here. Opponent has missed multiple land drops now, and we just drew one of the best cards in our deck, so happy times for that. Uh, we're going to attack first here. The reason I'm going to do that is just in case he drew Spark Jolt, we want to incentivize him to, to use it right now. I mean, very small edge here, but I think it's worth it to do that first just in case, because if he does that and then we get to play Blood Toll Harpy, that's really good for us. We'd much rather have the Harpy here, of course, um, as, as long as he's missing land drops. You know, we get to keep beating down. All right, what do you got? That thing. It's uh, interesting. It's actually really, really interesting. Um, but it's not going to do anything right now. Uh, so the question is, are we attacking with Sedge Scorpion? Um, I think he's going to block. Like, I think he just wants to use that Death Bell to get anything he can out of it. And so I'm not going to attack with it. Definitely see board states and scenarios where I wouldn't expect him to block with it, but this is definitely not one of them. I fully expect him to block. And I'm going to follow up. You know, it's actually a tough decision. If I should just play the staunch hearted warrior here, or just slam the reaper. If I play the warrior, I, I just take the three from the death bell. If he draws or plays anything, I time defeat it and I hit him. If I just play the Reaper, then I'm definitely blocking Death Bellow Guy. Taking a little bit of risk on there. Actually, you know, I probably just wouldn't block anyway. I'm going to go with the Reaper. And I don't think I'm even going to block. I don't know. Well, let's see what he does. Let's see if he plays a land first. So this is very awkward, but I'm actually just going to take it. Because it's two damage, and if he has that stupid one red uh, Titan Strength or whatever it's called, then he just kind of gets me. Like, he gets to kill my Reaper, and that's just unacceptable when, really, I'm going to be just destroying him here anyway. Cards that we're, like, mildly concerned about are, like... There's really not much. Uh, Anger of the Gods is something that could do some damage to us, but we would still keep our Reaper, so it's not even that big of a deal. And I'm certainly going to try to set up Lethal here, even if he plays a creature. Yeah. All right, so he looks to be Red-Black Aggro. So how do we slow down Red-Black Aggro? Well, I think we go into our Gray Merchant plan. I think I like that better. Um, the Asp is fine. I'm going to cut... Basically, are are more fragile, but ultimately pretty powerful stuff. But just getting down some big blockers early, I think, is going to do well. We didn't see a ton of his deck, but the colors do tell us quite a bit, generally speaking. So let's see what he comes up with here. Uh, this is a keep. It's it's fine. It's totally fine. Oh, I think I should have put in another Farika's Cure, potentially. That's okay, though. All right, so we're going to lead off the game with a Sedge Scorpion, which is really nice against decks like this. And then probably just going to play the Voyaging Seder here next, but we're going to have a, basically another Scorpion. Let's let the battle. And then play out the Seder. I like that. I'm just going to try to curve out here. Depends on what he plays here. We're either going to play the Harpy or the Corsair, unless we draw a 4-drop. 
Opaline oh, Unicorn. All right, well, I got to confess, I did not expect to see that here. Well, we did actually draw a four drop. You know, I think I'm going to offer the trade because I don't think he's going to take it. And if he does, I am far from devastated by that. So let's do it. Yes, he did not take it. Um, let's just get some beef going here. Engage beef mode. And uh, I want to try to play out these big creatures that are good early here so that I can basically work to a gray merchant. He's got five mana for, wow, that big guy. It's interesting. All right, so he, he basically is unblockable. Three creatures. When he dies, exile it, and each player returns all creature cards from his or her graveyard to his or her hand. Hand. So if I triple block and it actually happens, like if my triple block resolves, so to speak, then I get my guys back. Which seems okay. I feel like I can race him now. I think for now I'm just going to try to race him. Never played against that card, so I'm not really sure exactly how to proceed, but it feels like triple blocking and having him like kill our Sedge Scorpion is kind of unacceptable. So let's uh, Viper's Kiss this thing. This guy, I guess. And we're going to play a Blood Toll Harpy. So that we can actually attack. Because if he wants to start attacking with this thing, we're going to hit him back pretty hard. Yeah, he's attacking. He's got one chump lock out of that uh, Opaline unit. which will probably just let him do. I mean, I could get greedy and try to Grey Merchant, but I think just getting in more damage with a Courser down the line is probably better anyway. Two, all right, so he's got a Wanderer, but no. Oh, he's got his own tar Harpy. <laughs> I wish I had that Viper's Kiss now. All right, so we hit a land drop. So I've got a Baleful Eidolon that I can bestow up something with. Or I can just cast a Cavern Lamp Pad, which doesn't do a ton here. I can also just cast Grey Merchant for one, two, three, for four, which isn't really that impressive either. So I think I'd rather just spend all my mana and play the Bale Idol on here. Not a lot of great stuff going on though. If I because if I played on the Blood Toll Harpy, then he could still just trade. And that's not great. If I played on the Sedge Scorpion, then he can just start leaving up mana to regenerate. Same thing with the uh, Courser. I actually don't have an amazing play here at all. Could just cast the Cavern Lamp Pad, but I'm one mana away from making like this guy unblockable in 5-5, which seems Super good, comparatively speaking. I could just play the Baleful Eidolon and block with it, the Sedge Scorpion, and something. That doesn't seem bad. So I think I'm just going to bestow it. Say go. I 
So now if he attacks with this, I get to block here, here, and here, and he has to kill this and this in order to uh, actually get me. Ooh. That's unhappy. Yeah, I'm taking a bunch here. Taking 11, 12, am I dead? No, I can block that guy. 6, 9, 10, 11. Taking 11. Well, I guess I have to Grey Merchant next turn. Yeah, I can't block. Must be blocked by 3. All right, we're down to 1. <laughs> That's what I really wanted. This will be tough to come back from, but we will attempt it. So we'll go back up to uh, six here and pass the turn back. This lets me live. I get to Block, block. No, it's got some. Sip of hemlock. All right, well, that's two. I'm still alive. I'm, I'm at one here if he swings all out. All right, well, it couldn't get any closer than this, but we are still technically alive here. I'm gonna be at one after I play Blood Toll Harpy, but... Ooh! Is he merchant number two, you say? Fortunately, I think I have to f play this Harpy first. <laughs> this is very sketchy, but I believe I must do it. If I attack with everything, what happens? I just have to make sure I'm keeping an eye on that, but that's not what I want to do here. So I do have blocks here though. It's going to force a trade, which I'll take. A little bit bummed though because I'd like to Grey Merchant here, but what is he going to do? Rescue it? If he goes for rescue, I can still be alive. Phalanx. Okay, we have somehow stabilized here, barely. And we're going to hit him for one, two, three, four, five, six here. Can I get in for three? Not this turn. All right, well, we're going to set up the win next turn, but I'm going to go for the uh, Grey Merchant now to just pad our life total. And because next turn I can give my... Uh, oh, no, he's got this stupid thing. <laughs> this is too funny. All right, if I attack with everything... That doesn't work. All right, go. <laughs> this is too funny. That unicorn. Wild Celebrants? Is it a May? It is a May. Ugh. Maybe he'll do it. Yes. Blow it up. Do it. Because uh, he could have done it maybe just because he thought about Viper's Kiss or something, but yeah, that was a long shot anyway. All right, so we draw a forest. So I think I can just Cavern Lamb pad up like Nessian Corsair or Sedge Scorpion or whatever and just attack. He's going to block with Opaline Unicorn. And then, yeah, he gets a turn. So I guess, though, I'd probably just do my worst creature then, because they're all going to be lethal. Like, I, think, I think I just do my Voyaging Seder here. Actually, wait, if he attacks with everything next turn, I go block. Block, block, block. All right, I'm fine. So 
attack you. He blocks with Unicorn. And he has a turn. Okay, you've got to kill me here. There are definitely things that kill me here, so we're not out of the woods. comes the, the all-out attack. He, oh, he can't even do the, uh, the phalanx, though. All right, so if, he, if I take this, <laughs> uh, this is so funny. So if I take it, then I can kill him. If I don't, then this thing, uh, when Underworld Cerebrus dies, exile it. Oh, so he couldn't even have had, what's it called? Um, and each player returns all creature cards from his or her graveyard to his or her hand. So that means he gets Opaline Unicorn back, and he gets Blood Toll Harpy, and that's it. And then my guys die. I think I just need to make sure a Grey Merchant dies. Yeah. It's a block. Will one die here? Not necessarily. He can do all six damage to the Sedge Scorpion. They trade. He plays the Unicorn. One, two, three, plays the Unicorn. Maybe even plays the Harpy. And then he's got five creatures, and I will have one, two, three, four, five. This is actually really tough. Or do I get another guy back? Oh, I get two two harpies back too. Yeah, so this seems fine because then all I need to do is get one damage in. It also means he can't play his own blood toll harpy without dying. And if he kills my gray, either of my gray guys, I can just kill him. Yeah, he just stacked it all up on the sedge scorpion. And then this means that I think I'm good here. So he replays the Opaline Unicorn. But he cannot replay the Sedge, the, the Blood Toll Harpy. And so then I think I can just attack with everything, get in for one, and then double Harpy him to death. Right? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, don't play that thing. Oh, he's got a creature. <laughs> oh, man, this is insane. Oh. Emissary on Baleful Eidolon? That should do it. Yeah, that, uh, that'll do it. Play that on this thing, then it forces double blocks on it. Yeah, that should do it. Because I think I can just attack with everything now. Because this thing is a 4-4. Four, four. So it, if it gets single blocked, he dies. So it has he has so that thing takes two creatures, and that leaves him three creatures to block all of these. This one has to block here. This one's lethal, so it must be blocked. So block, block. So two creatures are blocked, and then two more are blocked on this guy so that he doesn't die. That leaves him one to block this. But if he blocks two, then he's going to take two, and then that's two, and he's dead. All right, so I think we got it. Let's hope I did the math right, huh? So that block he must do. He also has to put, if he takes two from one of the gray merchants, then he has to put three creatures in front of the Belfile alarm. 
So there's that. So this has him taking five. No, not five, but lethal. This has him taking three. He can't play that boon thing. All right, we got him. Really tight stuff. Man, these games were super tight. This is a pretty cool format, though. A lot going on. And it seems like uh, a pretty well-rounded format, too. You know, like there's aggro decks, there's control decks, there's slowdown, there's different stuff going on. And you got to love that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you want to send a e uh, feedback email, it is limitedresourcespodcast at gmail.com. If you would like to uh, follow me on Twitter, you can do so, Marshall underscore LR. If you want to join the clan here on Magic Online, it's uh, just send me a message like you've seen people do here, uh, Marshall underscore LR. And last but not least, for all things... Uh, limited resources, lrcast.com. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Maybe. I'll be in Dublin.